guys, what's up? Excoundrel here, and welcome to my video on a CP build that has been gaining popularity for Celeste and Scarf, though specifically for Celeste, so we're going to focus on Celeste in this video. Now, the items coming up on your screen are the build. It may not look much different from the builds that you've already played with Celeste, but the order of the items is what's important. Your first three items are Frostburn, Eve of Harvest, and Clockwork, and Broken Myth comes in as a fourth. Take a look at this clip. D'Enzio tries the build out, and it is so good. So by reducing the, chan uh, the cooldown of the Heliogenesis, it means you're more likely to place it in an area that Sky is, while her Suri Strike is on cooldown. Loves the ability to be able to spam from range as well. The, the energy regeneration in this build, as well as the range that he now has at level 8, means he's going to outrange hammers for the most part. That's exactly where they want to keep him, at range. Look at this, it's like a minefield. They have to negotiate so carefully around this Heliogenesis. Look at the damage as well coming out. It's untouchable right now for the NTO. Oh, from Eltar does that. Call Collapse is going to land too, although the Suri Strike back was almost good. He ends up falling anyway. Dienzio just chasing underneath Tari. He wants a little bit of starting. The starting's going very low. He uses that reflex block for the shield. But it... So you saw Dienzio there piloting this build incredibly well. It all revolves around Celeste's Heliogenesis. You get a 1.2 second cooldown instead of a 2, and you get 500 ma extra max energy and 12.5 energy recharge when you combine the Clockwork and Eve of Harvest. Celeste should be using her range to her advantage. She controls the battlefield from a very long distance, especially at level 8, meaning that you're supposed to zone enemies away by placing Heliogenesis down, meaning that they can't step on that area for a short period of time for risk of being hit by a supernova. Clockwork allows you to apply more of those to the battlefield, playing into Celeste's main strength, which is her ability to control the battlefield from afar. So we're going to do a quick experiment. And what I did is I timed 10 seconds on my phone and I tried to see how many heliogenesis that I could get down in 10 seconds, including the supernovas. So, it's a raw DPS challenge, not taking into account shielding or PS, just pure amount of DPS that could be done if you hit every single ability. Now, if you compare the two, you'll notice that on the left, the Broken Myth build, I get six Heliogenesis down. The Clockwork build, I get eight Heliogenesis down. So I get three full rotations of Supernova on the Broken Myth build and four full rotations of Supernova on the Clockwork build. You'll notice that the damage is much higher on the Clockwork build, about 50 DPS higher, and the ability to uh, sort of compensate for your mistakes. Let's bring 100 shielding into the picture though. So 100 shielding will half damage and then you're going to apply the true 10% pierce or the pierce that you get from the Broken Myth. You are still getting a slight DPS increase on the Clockwork build. So if you compare these two builds, you'll see that there's a comparable damage output in long fights, although it's going to get better the longer that you're in the fight with Broken Myth. You can't compare to nine Broken Myth stacks, that's very good. It's more forgiving if you miss, miss skill shots, and you've got the better energy, energy sustain to control the battlefield from afar. Now, obviously, you're going to build both Clockwork and Broken Myth in your final build anyway, but as a three-item build, you'll notice that Clockwork has got some significant advantages over Broken Myth. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys, and I will see you next time.